welcome to tennis. Kind of sucks. Uh, sucks. Making some progress there. Yeah. Uh, the podcast with Travis Threat and Graham D'Amico. I'm your producer, Luke. And uh, I do actually want to start this off with a slight confession. Um, Travis, while you're away, Graham got me hooked on the boba. Wow. Yeah. So now you have $300 coming out of your account every month. <laughs> yep. <laughs> I've set up a direct deposit to with, Betty at with Moonlight Moon Boba. boba. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 I didn't realize it's only five minutes away from where I live. It's dangerous. <laughs> dangerous. I've literally put myself like, I'm not allowed to drive down those roads anymore. Because as soon as I see it, I'm like, fucking Boba. <laughs> I was given strict instructions. Just ask for the Graham special. Oh my! Uh, yeah. I'm yeah. sure they're well aware of that. Too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Exactly. So Graham is well, so now happy. You're, you're, now you're pretty. Like every now and then, he might just show up and have a boba for you. Like that's, yeah. the, that's the occasional thing that happens. It's like it's like you get a hook, get you hooked on drugs. Like every now and then, I bring you a little a little free sample. Yeah, he's my yeah, pusher. Yeah. Exactly. Brings the free sample. Just keep you hooked. Yeah. He's, he's probably stop. got a steak in there. Like something's up. But you loved it. Right? I loved it. It was good. I mean, I'm a big tea fan. Every dealer so, says, you know. <laughs> it, 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 it vibes with me. I'm into it. Um, Graham doesn't get boba. He just gets the tea. So it's not. No, he has the getting... balls in it, doesn't it? I don't. I used to get it all the time, oh. but I drink it so much. Yeah. It's not the healthiest for you. I don't oh. think it is in general, but the boba is just, it's just tapioca. So it's just sugary carbs is all yeah. it is. It's yeah. a the it's sugar coated carb. Well, it's supposed to be a treat, Graham, not a daily oh. occurrence. I know. Mine's yeah. a daily occurrence. So. <laughs> yeah. I like the bowls though. <laughs> All right, so uh, he's done that, that whole episode. conversation <laughs> for that. I love that. How can we not call this podcast balls? <laughs> it's I mean, not, gosh. No. Back of the rack is the best name. <laughs> All right, well, okay, briefly then. Yeah, so we've got some running favorites. Graham's favorite for the podcast is balls. Still. Still. Uh, I'm a big fan of Back of the Rack too. I guess, Travis, you are. Back of the well. Rack is, in my opinion, the best. I like Back of the Rack. The downside of Back of the Rack is it's just like every other podcast name. No, it's not. It's like, Expected. Tell me, tell me one name that's degrading to themselves. Oh, well, are we saying back of the rack to be degrading to ourselves or to other people we play? Pickleball in general, all of our community, like you lose, you're at the back of the rack. We're the fucking losers. We go to the back of the rack. All right. Yeah, yeah. Okay. It's, it's, it's self-deprecating. It's just, it's, the, funny. it's just the like phrase. It's you know, a great like, phrase. Like queen it of the court. off the tongue. He doesn't like the, the yeah, syntax. They call, <laughs> they call themselves king. They, they're like, we're so fucking good. We're literally the opposite. We're like, we're so shit. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, we had some other suggestions too. Did we, did yeah. we make a list of those? I had a couple. There, there wasn't anything that like stood. To, there was a lot of joke ones. Did you need some... Did you need a little pick me up right at the beginning of the podcast? <laughs> yeah, just leave him be. <laughs> the guy, we start a podcast. Dude, the guy's been having a lot of balls. <laughs> we, start, we start a podcast. <laughs> he breaks open a cliff bar like he <laughs> needs some sustenance to get through this half hour. I really, it's going to take a lot of strength, honestly. I need it. Uh, Trust me, he's been going through a lot. Yeah. He's still recovering from Ultra. Uh, I am still in recovery mode from Miami. You're right. You're right. All right. Um, what were some other names that were suggested? Do you remember? I know Sweet Spot was one. Sweet Spot was one, yeah. And we bad. also had some Crescent Lake puns, like Crescent Lake Pod and stuff like that. And then which, a lot of really nice ones like Pickleball Buddies. I'm like, love the name. That's not going to work for us. I like that um, for us. The Rat and Rattlesnake. The Rat. It means I'm the Rat. That was literally my childhood nickname. Exactly. The Rat? The Rat. That's so maybe they're both referring to you, the Rat Probably. and the Rat. From the time that I was like seven years old, one kid in my class, my initials are T-A-R. He saw it in computer class, R-A-T back. Like the next five years, Rat. Want some cheese, rat? It was like the not a nickname. It was my insulting name. Wow, like, um, gotcha. people made fun of me as the rat. Gotcha. Damn. Did you have an insulting name growing up? Uh, Play-Doh boy. Why? Because you. My my mom decided to sp spend sp spend all night on a school night making Play-Doh with me, and then forgot that I had homework. And she wrote a letter to my teacher explaining why I didn't have my homework, and she, my teacher read it out to the whole class. Oh my goodness! That and I was teacher forever known as Play-Doh boy. Wow. Which is uh, is yeah. that a real story or just an excuse no, that's your mom absolutely, made up? Absolutely, absolutely. I don't think real you can story. make that up on the fly, Graham. That's too yeah. odd. <laughs> well, she wrote a note. No, I mean, is the note was the note oh. legit, or was yes. your mom just finding an excuse? No, oh the, no, no. The, we, it, the whole thing was true. My mom was too honest. She yes. could have just said, you know, didn't he do was sick. Homework. He was sick. Yeah, yeah. right. Anything. <laughs> she didn't realize the the repercussions she right, would exactly. have on my and the teacher. Like both of them are complicit here. Yeah. Who reads that? <laughs> I know. Hey, what so about stupid. your mom? Just forgetting about homework. To, uh, well, what a, yeah, what a, know, what a listen, childhood. Yeah. <laughs> I ended up being homeschooled. So. <laughs> that makes sense. Yeah. Play-Doh yeah. boy got homeschooled. Yeah, yeah, that yeah, does yeah. make sense. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what about you? Did you have one? Actually, mine was, for the most part, graham cracker, which I didn't mind. I thought, I was like, that's I endearing. I was, yeah. Yeah, that's what I thought too. But people yeah. thought it was, kids thought it was funny. Well, yeah, graham, it's cracker, like a soft, graham cracker, graham right? cracker. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> 
I'm like, real original. Funny. And then my whole life, even when I'm like 30, people are like, you ever been called Graham Cracker? No, never. No one's ever I thought of that. I see you like a first. kid making fun of you, <laughs> and you're just staring at them blankly like, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> is that supposed to be offensive? I, I like That's that. That's exactly. <laughs> That's how funny. I responded. <laughs> I've been workshopping Graham Graham is my nickname for you. How do you feel about that? I'm okay with Graham Graham. It's like yeah. grandmother, grandma. I get that quite a bit really? too. Really? Grandma? Yeah. Nice. It's Talk as good to as text Lukey always Poo. switches. My, Lukey Poo is my name. Lukey for Luke. Poo is what you call me. <laughs> oh man, letting all the secrets out. Okay. Um, well, moving on. We'll see. Let us know in the comments if you like any of those names. Uh, and uh, yeah, we'll see if we can make a decision soon. Um, We're going to so, have to take a vote. Back, I mean, it has to be a vote. Yeah. yeah. Back of the rack is the Let right Let the name. people decide. Balls, exclamation point. No. <laughs> you were, we're trying to have people come on, not be like, oh, balls? No, thank you. <laughs> the whole point of changing this is so that we have people that would say, hey, we can't come on because of your name. Come on. <laughs> and now That's you true. want someone to come on. It to means balls. like we Maybe have <laughs> we have balls and pickleballs. Oh, Graham, I'm not debating what it means. I'm debating that really you that can offensive. take it out of context in a million ways. Not to mention our producer here. Like, could you? He's gonna go have a field day with this. I'm already struggling. I just suffer Literally, myself. Every with this time clip. we start, he's gonna be like, "Balls, welcome to balls. balls. I love balls." <laughs> yeah. it's, a, it's a given. You're making a good argument for the name I for me. <laughs> I, really, I was thinking the same thing as I said it. Like, shit. Wow. All right. Well, it's Championship Sunday, and Travis, you're sat here. Which, <laughs> um, <laughs> wow. Oh, what a segue! Uh, Thanks. <laughs> How'd you make it back so fast? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I've uh, actually been back for like 36 hours. <laughs> <laughs> um, but actually, some pretty good results. Let's talk about uh, the match you went 11-4, 11-3 in. Who was that against? Um. So first round mix, we played Tyler Lung and Elise Jones. And both, both taken premier, both premier, both Utah natives, uh, big fan of Elise, big fan of Elise. And, <laughs> um, yeah, we were down four, one things weren't going so hot. And then we won 16 straight points. And the whole thought in my head was like, wow, this is the second time I've won more than 15 points in a row against Tyler. Lung. Mm. <laughs> this guy's really, really, really good. <laughs> But he's had some results before that, but I guess he had a bad yeah, weekend. He does. It was a bad nah, weekend. He's had, look, the guy's playing better, but it, in, in mixed, he's just not forceful. He's obviously much better in men's doubles. He's got, you know, a, a very good drop. It's a good dinker. But yeah. in, in mixed, it's so much more about like just pressuring the person in front of you. And that's not it. That's not happening. Um, do you think that that's a good matchup for them to play? They're not, they're not on the drafted on the same premier team. No, they? they're not. They're okay. on different teams. Yeah. So do you think that, that that's a good pairing for Loon and Jones or no? Because he needs a strong left-sided woman, right? Yeah, I think Travis is saying they're, he's going to have a tough time winning with anyone, really. No. no, he played with Marietta. He had a great win. They beat uh, Rachel and Federico. You know, Marietta's a, a player. And, that, and I had an advantage in the match. Marietta's so forceful. So it was like you're playing with, a, you know, I don't want to say like a second male, but certainly someone who has a lot of finishing power. Yeah. So once we got hot, it was like, you know, what, what, how, how do we want to play this? We can play it basically any way we want. Yeah. Um, so you made it to the quarterfinals for both mixed and men's. Um, let's talk about the men's match. Sadly. Uh, yeah, men's match was interesting. Uh, first of all, playing with Connor was great. Guy's two-hander is disgusting. Filthy. Like, everybody knows that, but it's just, it's bizarre what he can do with it. But more, like, I was more impressed by just his kind of uh, enthusiasm while he plays. Sick competitor. Cerebral. You could talk about strategy, and he implements the strategy right away. So we got down against Stax Renteas 10-2, game one. Come back to 11-10-1. Have a really long point. I actually had a solid counter. Federico kind of shoots, you know, handcuffed him, and he blocks it back. And then I had predetermined in my head that I was going to hit a lob. A ball comes about <laughs> net high, maybe two inches above the net. And I stuck with that. And that was not the best decision. Um, <laughs> so that didn't end well. And then, yeah, we had three more game points after that. So we, you know, we lost the next one. Connor went for a one-handed flick, which, you know, he's, he's working on. It's not in his nature. Kind of center netted it. And then uh, we had two more. And they just didn't go our way. You know, those guys played good points. But we certainly could have played better at that moment. And then um, I'll rue the lob for a while, which... Is what it is. You know, the margins are small. Never, like, never give me a hard time again when it's match point and I hit a lob. 
I duly noted. <laughs> um, How often? I, the, the difference is, Graham, is I won't do it again. You, you'll do it 88 more times. <laughs> yeah, that that sure. checks out. Yeah. yeah. Graham yeah. does love a lob. You're a big And then, like, you know, I mean, I, that's an excuse, but the, the right side, I'm still just like, my decision making is not fantastic. I still feel like, what the fuck am I doing over here at times? So I've got to figure it out. I need, I need more reps over there. I, I'm convinced that, like, if the same ball came and I was on the left, there's zero chance I fucking lob it. I just hit it. But, uh, you know, I'm kind of in that what do I do over here phase and I'll figure it out. Yeah. How, how many times are you made predetermining? Graham, we can't allow this. Are you what, fucking what happened? kidding me? What happened? I didn't see it. You know what's happened. The middle court there. We can't allow that. I don't understand. I'm watching what you stated. Oh. Be happening. <laughs> so we have, we have this. Uh, yeah, I'm sure this is a problem in a lot of rec plays. So we have a challenger side and a beginner side here at Crescent Lake. And a lot of times, not a lot of times, but sometimes the recreational you side will come over kidding. will come over to the challenger side and try to get in a game and it kind of ruins our games because now we got three people yeah, that it's can one thing if you tell them they should like understand and 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 this is apparently this this young man's been told like four times refuses to go he can't make a fucking ball yeah yeah so several people have told certain people hey you should stay to the other, stick to the other side in the nicest way possible of course you know learn some learn some over on the recreational side get better and then come over here when you're competitive and play games but until then it, it makes our games tough to enjoy when you've got you know three four five plus players and then a 3-0 you know what's funny though is i don't know i don't know how often that is at other parks because i hear so much like almost no park that i know of does what we do where it's like two on and you stay everybody that i've talked to it's like four, four on, four, on off. four off yeah that's true but for those of you that do this understand and uh you know like all i can say is how we handle it is Make sure we don't go easy on them. Make sure we destroy them so they get, hopefully get the message. And then just gently ask them, you know, and say, hey, you, you might need a couple more weeks or not a couple more months. Yet. And you're not quite there yet. Simple. See, and what you don't do, though, is play with them and get them wins so that they feel more comfortable. Did somebody do that? I've, got a, I've got a problem with that sometimes. Okay. I feel bad sometimes. Oh, God. Please, can't help it. you're fucking empathy. Are you kidding me? You're the least empathetic person I've ever met in my life. There's some weird moments like that there where I have empathy. There are some fucking weird moments. <laughs> yeah, I'll agree with that. <laughs> Most selfish, just kidding. Mm. All right. Stop. Anyway, getting off track. Okay, <laughs> let me let me rope this back in. I don't mean that. Um, I don't mean that. So, some interesting results from North Carolina. Jeannie had a pretty decent couple wins. Dude, Jeannie looked fucking better, man. I even watched her play against Parento game one, and it was like, She's getting the hang of this. Yeah. <clears throat> I think the coolest part was when she played Stratman, which was, I guess, her first official singles win. Yeah. She was exuberant when she won. She was, like, literally elated. You're talking about a girl who's fucking gone finals of Wimby and had, I don't know, I think she was four or five in the world in tennis, like, had incredible success. And when she won her singles match against Lauren Stratman with 14 people watching, she was, like, giddy. And really? turned to the guy she was with and was, like, Fucking A. And it was funny, the guy who was helping her there, I don't know who the one guy was, but Sherry was hitting with her all the time. Ryan. Really? Ryan was helping her out left and right. On did, the court with her, giving her reps. Did Ryan play? I have, I, I'm sure he did, but I, I didn't see that portion. Because I, I, I showed up so late. My flights got fucked up. I got it at 2 a.m., had to default singles and played uh, mix like at 1. Damn. So I deep singles just because I needed to sleep. Well, that's a longer story. And then, uh, yeah, so I didn't see Ryan, but every time that I showed up, he was at the courts with her hitting. Wow. That's cool. That's yeah. wild. Yeah, well, congrats, Jeannie. And she, and she had a good win with Roddy. I think Roddy. Yeah, um, got Eric beat, Roddy uh, went off, I heard. I'm, dude, he's fucking good. Yeah. They, they beat um, Deacon and Michelle Esquivel. Yeah, he was on our list, short list As for us. As should be, yeah. Uh, but we got Pat Smith in the third, yeah, so. Yeah, you can't. Tough to go with Eric Roddy. Tough to go away from that. Um, other, Ogiga. Go to the semis. Fuck, he's in the, he's in the final. He's in the final? Yeah, he's in the final. They, they, oh, just, they, they beat Staxford and Tejas badly. They won the first game. He, first of all, I've been saying Jaume martinez Vic is good for a while. I spotted Augie early, too. I, I think I have five events with him or something like that. Maybe, if, maybe six, I don't know. But he's super steady. And then just, again, like a hyper-cerebral guy. And, and I was told this. Apparently on the SAT, he aced the math, math portion. Didn't miss a question. I believe Not one. That. Uh, so needless to say, he's not a stupid human being and he doesn't play stupid. He's super calculated. His error count is very, very low. He's aware of what's happening. And then Xiaomi is a little bit more of a wild card because he's just going for some crazy shit, but he's so agile. He's got such good hands that they're, they're forming a great pairing. And but I think most people knew there was talent there because Augie went in premiere, right? Yeah. And 
No, they Vic, knew, they knew Vic, now. Vic might have. He was close, but he was like the third pick overall yeah, yeah, in sure. Challenger. He was really for sure. high. For sure. He was really high. three. Or but something. I think that people underestimated like his ability to play on the left because again, he's so good off the bounce, forehand and backhand. Like it's very hard to hit a dead ball to him. If you hit anything dead to him, it's it's gonna be laced somewhere. Yeah. Mm. Wow. That's awesome. So yeah, he's he had, he had a great result. The the biggest upset of the tournament, there were two of them really, was uh, Anna Bright and Ignatovic went down to Todd Fought and Maggie Brasha, and Fought and Brasha ended up making the semis, beating Hayden and Leia in the quarters. Who of course Hayden had played with Maggie for fuck I don't know over a year, and then you know I don't think there's anything malicious there. I'm sure there isn't. You know they're both very very nice people, but. Uh, Todd played insane. Like I watched his first match against Julian Arnold and Paris Todd, and I was like, "Fuck, this guy's playing well." And and then he showcased that. They he played. was another guy on our short list in Challenger, again, obviously. He been. He's very very good. He went before we got a chance at him. Really? Unfortunately, went, we had to take somebody Pat. else. We, yeah, I went before Pat. Oh, wow, interesting. Unfortunately, we had to take somebody else ahead of him as our guy. Yeah, I, I was playing during the draft, so I didn't know exactly the spots. <laughs> and then, of course, the biggest upset of the event was Sarah Ansbury and a Banata. I, I remember Val Bonata from junior tennis. His sister beat Rohrbacher and Bright, which was just like a head scratcher, especially considering the next match. I think Schneeman and David were up like 11-0 or 11-1 or something like that. 10-0 maybe at one point against Ansbury and Bonata. And it was like, damn, what the hell happened? Ansbury's got Rohrbacher's number. Just got the right strategy to, to put Rohrbacher down. She's got the right amount of mobility. <laughs> <laughs> she just knows how to play Rachel. She knows how to play Rachel. That's yeah. her second win over her. Apparently, she yeah, Rachel actually told me that she had a loss to her like six or seven months prior and was preparing to avenge that loss. That did not go as planned. <laughs> and for those of you that don't know, I'm a huge fan of Rachel. She's probably my favorite girl out there because I can talk to her like a guy. And sometimes I think she gets has enough of me, which is probably understandable. And then most of the time she handles it very, very well. So I was giving her a little grief. I would walk behind the court and when she was warming up, I would go, it's Barry. <laughs> and she would, she would quickly turn me or turn around and tell me to shut the fuck up. <laughs> nice. That's awesome. Uh, all righty. Well, we've been speaking a little bit about it, but maybe we can pivot to the draft now. Um, so... Gosh, I don't know. Where do we start? Eight hundred and sixty thousand dollars for for that number one spot. You think that's warranted? Is that yeah? That's the right play. Fucking a. Of course it is. All right, read that team. How do you feel about that team? Do you remember it? What it is? Who it is? Uh, I remember that it's Coop, Irvin, and Colin Johns. Yes. yes. Yeah. How do you feel about that team? I think the picks after are very, very suspect. They are friendly. Well, they had to be. They yeah. Well, no, they didn't. There was plenty of good players. There was plenty at the bottom of the at, yes. in the fourth round. Three yes. players in the fourth round. Yes, there were plenty of quality players. Okay, well Ben seems to know what he's doing. Listen, this is what someone said this the other day. Like Ben knows what he's doing. He's proven that time and time again. Let's be fucking really clear here. There are anomalies. They were down 2-0 twice, and Eric Lang went fucking dummy twice, and then they won Dreambreakers twice. That is an anomaly. Those are not. That's not normal. You can't go down 0-2 where Ben's losing men's, which probably won't happen with Colin. And then they lose women's. And then suddenly in mixed, you got your, you know, do you, do you see, I mean, maybe it'll happen, but Colin is going to go off and fucking dominate mix. And then they're going to be, you know, maybe, I don't know. I, yes, he knows what he's doing, but to me that there were, there were better picks. But I also understand for Ben, like he wants to enjoy this. And all of these people that are on that team are people that he has previous relationships, he's friends with, he's very close with. So I think. Yes, they'll be a very formidable team. The guy is insanely good, so he can basically make a formidable team with anyone. But do I think the picks are like the absolute right picks? Fuck no. Mm. Interesting. Mm. What's your take on it? You think you don't? You think it's good picks or or? I think I have them as a winning team. They were one of my top three teams in of Premier. Of course. Oh, yeah. okay. Yeah. Of so, course. well, who would you have taken instead? Of, I he mean, how's anybody? I, I'm guessing Ben knows who he wants. He gets to see the whole list of people, and he decided he wants those. I think that's. No, that's not. See, you're, you're missing it. He doesn't. He doesn't care. In his mind, he can win with anybody. But he's taking people that he's friends with. He wants to have fun with it. He do, the, the result doesn't. He's he's literally said this that MLP to him is more like an exhibition. Yeah. He's going on and having fun. He wants to play with four friends. He wants to go to dinner with his friends after. He doesn't want to form like new bonds necessarily uh. or engage with new people or find like he's played with all these people too. So he feels comfortable. 
You know, he can him go and out Coop and have himself. a long, long relationship. Yeah, they played together last year in um, Newport Beach, and they've yeah they've known each other for years. They played yeah. together for years. Yeah, Coop's been on the PPA tour for like forever. Yeah, right? Forever. I know that, and I'm yeah. just wondering yeah, if they're yeah, no, close. They, they I don't have know. A, they have a relationship. So I mean, I think that. Let me hear another name that you would have gone with if you were Ben Johns. If I was ben that was Jones? down there in the fourth, third, and a third, fourth round. Oh, jeez. Um, I'd have to, I'd have to look at the names that were left. Okay. You know, I, I don't think. But that's you a fair... saw some that you were like, I would. You could... I mean, you could say like, Jaume, Jack Monroe. Um, oh, I see. People that went in premier in challenger. Yeah, people that went in cha people that didn't get picked up. Like may maybe even C.J. Klinger, but I, I, he might have gotten picked up just before. Um, I'm not. I'm not sure on the women's side. We've always said that the like kind of inner circle of pickleball players, the OGs, try to like retain those spots and not let new people in. And maybe that's an example of it. You well, know, it's like, that and like look a lot of these, like there's you can go through quite a few of the picks towards the end that are like friendship picks where the 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 premier player, the top player on that squad has a lot of input, obviously, with the GM of who they want on the team. And you're also banking it on a three year investment in that player. So, yeah, you have, you know, I think Mad Drops is probably the most obvious one. Like Hunter Johnson's a very good player, but hasn't showcased nearly the ability to be a premier player. However, he and Thomas Wilson are super tight. And Thomas probably believes that, hey, Hunter will end up as a very good player. So they choose him in the fourth round. And those guys are buddies. They're very good friends. So, yeah, where they're probably better options from a results standpoint, 100%. That's actually where I think you should have gone. That's I looked at all the teams and I was like, oh, those picks all make sense. That's the one where I said that I would have picked up Travis instead of Hunter Johnson in that spot. Well, as LA I was Mad watching, it, knowing the names that were kind of left, it was like there's a lot of friendship picks coming. Yeah, and there were there were I, I mean I, I could run through more than that. There were, I would say there were five friendship picks. Yeah, but that's kind of I think what I'm saying. We're saying the same thing yeah. is they're keeping that small OG circle small but as see, possible. No, it's, it's not just OG though. Like you're referencing it, it, Hunter Johnson's not an OG. I mean, it's it's Thomas Wilson might be to some extent, but it's more like when these little clicks form, maintaining that little click is important. Yes, yeah. the the OG thing is there, but it's also like I want to play with my buddy. I yeah. want to play with my friend. You know, like a coop if, is one of those is example for me. Jesse's for sure. an example of that. For Colin's sure. an example but, but of you're that. But see that OG is like the original OG click. And then there's separate clicks that formed that are like yeah. forming little practice hubs. For example, like the Utah, Utah squad is uh, a very good example of that. Like the Utah team other than Tyson is Utah, Utah, Utah. Yeah. And, and then, you know, like I think, I think Tyler's a, you know, he had obviously had a great result in Minnesota, but historically probably not crushing it. Right. But he's super tight with Connor Pardo. So Connor owns the Utah team. He's going to pick Loon. Like, that's a guarantee. If he has to choose between me and Loon, he's going to take Tyler. Sure. Regardless of the circumstance. Sure. Mm. Yeah, weird choice, though, to put Tyson on that team. Don't you think? I mean, I, the team makes no sense to me. Like, I look, literally look at it, and I think, like, there's almost been, like, some jokes from people. Like, it's the worst drafted team there is. And I think that's right. I think it's the, the worst drafted team I've ever I seen. I agree with that. Yeah. It's not a good team. I it's a weird draft. It's like the bouncers last year. It feels like the bouncers last yeah. year. Yeah. Um, so I guess the mistake of not picking you in the fourth round, Trav, meant, meant that, that you were able to go in Challenger. Yeah. Welcome back to the Smash. I mean, so initially I was so pissed, but then like as that unfolded, it was like, oh shit, that's a reality. Like I could, I could play for the squad here. And obviously, you know, we have our, our facility going up in what, seven months? Seven months end, of the year. Yeah. end of the year concluded, St. Pete Athletic. And so I think there's going to be... Um, a lot of positives from that, you know, think events we can do in the area and, and a lot of the things now with MLP players, with the contracts we sign with the new hold is there's events that we have to do with the team. Like I get to literally go out my, outside my front door and fucking do those events. Now I don't have to fly to anywhere. Like yeah. it saves me so much time, so much stress. And, and the reality is like in eight, eight months we'll be in premiere. Yep. Yeah. It's awesome. Some behind the scenes stuff that happened. So the day before in the day of the draft, we got a call. So we were fifth overall pick, right? In yeah. Challenger. We got a call from the first overall pick, the third overall pick, and the fourth overall pick to switch picks. All saying they were going to take me. All saying they're going to take Travis. Wait, like, like if I, you, I, I, I asked you to switch. Oh, like, before. Before. You switch the first for the fifth, and then you we get your third round or second round. Second round. Or, it was first round, switching first and second round, basically. Okay, so yes, basically yep. switching. Over. So they were trying to improve their draft position. And they all that, said, we're going to take Travis if you don't do and this we trade. Bluff. And we just said... If you want Travis, then you have a shot at him first before yeah, we even yeah, get a yeah. shot at him. Wow. There was only one team, and I won't name it, who was like, 
would you, do you want to play for Florida? I was like, yes. And I intend to help them with their draft board. So like fucking leave me yeah, alone. Yeah, but yeah, yeah. Like, no but all of them passed on Travis. So we well, got Travis I mean, in the it, fifth spot. It's not a surprise. I mean, it's like, yeah, if you draft this, like, and, but is I'm just saying, want- this is what people are doing behind the scenes. Like, hey, we're yeah, taking yeah. Travis. And I mean, like, I, I didn't, it didn't surprise <laughs> to try me to get a better second round pick. Right. Yeah. I got two calls from GMs, like, questioning one, are, do you intend to try? Like, that was one of the questions I got. Would you be able to try your hardest if you played against the Florida Smash next year? Like, if you guys were in Premier, like, yes, of course I would. Second question was, will your ownership stake become a conflict of interest at some point in the next three years? I can't answer that. I don't know. Maybe. Yeah. And so it was like, well, they, they just didn't want the headache. And I don't blame them for that. Like, it's a, it's a scenario that maybe isn't the most desirable. Like, you have a player that you might have to get rid of or might have to deal with some stress. Right. Hey, this guy's an owner. We want gambling to get in. We can't have him owning the squad. Like, that's, that's possible. Yeah. So the fact that they avoided me based on those things, it was like, yeah, I get it. Yeah. Well, right now you don't have to worry about it. You've, no, I'm fucking straight. Yeah, exactly. Great. Yeah. Worked out exactly. I mean, and then we, I mean, what a squad we ended up with. Great people. Yeah, let's recap that. So you got Tammy, Tammy Emmerich, Pat Smith, and Martina Frontova. Um, talk us through the, those people then. Well, three of them are in Florida. Three of them are in Florida. On West Coast. One's in Bradington, about 30 minutes from us. The other one's in Naples, which is about two hours from us. Yep. yep. And Travis. And then Patty's in Wichita. You know, he's got a great practice group there. And I, I'm really fond of Patty. Like the first PPA event I ever played, Graham came to was in Cincinnati, like two days after my dad died. And I played with Patty. We were terrible in the first match, like fucking atrocious. And then I want to say we won like nine matches in the back draw mm-hmm. to make to get to the third, fourth playoff. And we just kind of like, you know, I, I explained the situation maybe after five matches that day, because let's say I started a little slow. And, you know, we grew an affection for each other. And like, it's hard not to like Pat. He's like, he's a great guy. He's sweet. He's fair. He's kind. He fucking tries his ass off. So I'm, I'm very excited about that. Yeah. And then Tammy was a sick player. You know, she was like, I think a hundred WTA right around there and has, has, uh, has unlimited potential, you know? So yeah. Then we got Frantova who's played MLP before big, forceful, powerful. And I think has probably the highest upside of all the picks that were remaining, uh, for the women in the fourth round. Mm. Yeah. Do you think you will play right side with Pat or left side? I'll play left. Left? Pat's, okay. Pat's a right side specialist for the most part. Mm-hmm. Uh, he plays that with Jay. He can obviously play left and, and does so very well and mixed. But when we played, it'll be me. On, we'll, yeah. When we play, it'll be me on the left. And then what about the mixed matches? How do you feel like those will stack up right now? We don't know yet. I mean, I think, listen, I think whoever's, I, I, I strongly favor my mixed game generally because I can drive and crash pretty handsomely. Um, and I think Pat has a similar skill set. So we're going to have to work out who plays with who, whether it's going to be with Tammy. I vote for you and Tammy just because I think that's probably our strongest mixed team. Let's get that win. Let's say, hey, yeah. let's lock that win, and then we can choose where we well, want to play that again, match. That's, Do we want to play against very, their better very, team or their weaker premature. team? Yeah. I think that's a ridiculous okay. statement to say that. I think we have to, we have to go out and practice and feel it. And, and here's my theory. Like, I think that I'm slightly more capable than Pat of going dummy, like full court. <laughs> uh, I think Pat nor I is maybe the, the most mobile, but I think if you had to like rate it, I think I'm a little bit more mobile. And, and so if I'm going to play with essentially maybe the weaker female or the more, let's say, not trustworthy female as far as errors, it's easier for me to say, hey, I'm, I'm going to take 90% of the court than it might be for Pat to take 90% of the court. So it might be a better option for me to play with Frantova. Mm. Nice. Two different, two different schools of thought. Yeah, and one we have, is and we have to work them almost both guarantee out. a win, and the other two is but make, I think, the, make I a think, better option of winning both. I think, yeah, and I think Patty and Tammy, though, like t- how Tammy performs is going to be very interesting. Like I, I think she's super solid and super steady, so we might put her with me or Patty and just be like, shit, this is a lot. Okay. Yeah. So, what do you grade the other teams in Challenger then? Uh, which which teams are threatened to to you to you to you think or? Well, I wrote them down. I probably forgot now. I like the. Hey, I got to give kudos to the bouncers. I think the bouncers finally did a good job drafting. I think they did too. Leanne, congrats. Yep. Um, Anheuser, congrats. I think you have a good team finally this year that you can get behind. Uh, remind us who's on that team. Um, Do you remember? Do you want me to pull it up? Let me. I don't remember. I don't either. There's so many teams, and I'll get better at this as we go on. But I'll get it. Okay. Uh, let's see. And then another team that I really liked. In the hard eights. I is love the hard eights, which they always do a good job at drafting. Course. They're smart drafters. Yeah, they just follow real clear stats, basically, like you said. Yeah, so the bounces got Martinez Vic, uh, Jeannie Arakina, 
Todd Fort and Ang- Ang- Angie Walker. What was the first pick? Uh, Jaume. Jaume Vic, Todd Fott, Eric Kina, and uh, Walker, the Angie Walker, the, that's, the that's, left side that's Walker. A great, that's a great squad. Right? I mean, Jaume is fucking good, man. And so is Fott. Yeah. You just talked about them. Yeah. I mean, and both are good. Both can, I, I don't know how good Jaume is in mixed yet because he's, it, it's fun, it sounds funny, but like there's certain skill sets that are, are, are meant for, uh, each discipline and like I think on average to be really good in mixed you have to be bigger longer so like he's not a huge guy he's a smaller guy he wins with his legs hence men's doubles and singles he's awesome I think he's a little less in less good in mixed but Todd Fott is not he's very fucking good in mixed. let's put it this way three of those four players were in our first round picks before right. we knew Travis was coming down right. so they got three of our first round picks that's, that's impressive. pretty freaking yeah. good that's a squad <laughs> yep and then the hard eights they got Rafa DJ Young Amanda Hendry and Emily Ackerman it's a lottery team you know like yeah. could be great could be terrible you know both those guys are so hot and cold um and then I'm, I'm not that familiar with the girls so I can't really say much yeah. there but Hendry is Jack Foster's girlfriend. Yes, You've I know, seen her a bunch. I've she can play her, left but... side. No, she plays right. She's a lefty. But but she can play left side, oh, actually. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. She's decent over there. It's uh, weird when a lefty is good at the left side. Yeah, Todd. Well, yeah. I mean, either way, it's, so we've got 10 teams in Challenger because two were sold um, because they couldn't, I guess, hack it anymore. I don't know. They the money left <laughs> the pot. So two, two were sold to the, uh, UAP, right? And then UPA. Uh, UPA. Yeah, and so it's ten in to get to top four, which will move into Premier. So I think the odds are pretty good. I think we got a good shot at that. A great yeah, shot at that. I think we did too. Yeah, but we don't jinx it. This format, it's like you never yeah, know. No, it's difficult. You play one. You could now, lose every match by one point. Yeah. You know, it's crazy. Yeah. And now there's no freeze. One game to twenty five. Yep. Fucking. That's better for us. Of, I mean, of course, I'm not saying it's not, but but either way, it's like, let's say the games take eighteen minutes, twenty minutes per game a small sample size like you got to be ready yep. you have to you have to play well out of the gates yep and only about a month away from the first event right yeah atlanta may 9th so um, yeah, are you excited. gonna get some practice in before then you think definitely travis i think travis martina and tammy will we whether will or not we get sure. pat down here before that might be tough yeah especially because Pat's moving huh you're gonna move here yeah that's what I, that's what him and Jay told me. Yeah. They're moving here. <laughs> <laughs> that's right. When you were on the phone with him, that's yeah. right. Yeah. I was FaceTiming those two, congratulating Pat. And of course, in the passenger seat while Pat's driving is Jay saying, don't you worry about Patty. I got, he's going to be, go- I'm going to teach him how to play mixed. I'm going to teach him how to play men's doubles. I'm going to teach him how to win a dream breaker. Don't you worry about Patty. He's going to win it for you that's guys. That's your best French accent. <laughs> that's all I got. That's all you got. Let me hear how yours. that right there? Huh? <laughs> I don't want to. You didn't have to tell people they were French or I was even doing a French accent. That was just my Jay de Villiers. That's your accent. Jay de <laughs> Who's French? All right. It has right. a very Thanks strong a lot, French guys. accent. Yeah. I'm not, a, sorry, I'm not good at impersonations. <laughs> no, you're not. Uh, you're atrocious. That's so good. Let me hear yours. Uh, you're British, so you're probably better at this. I don't know. I mean, does he, I didn't, Let honestly, me hear Jay's accent. I just do a French accent. I started with a French accent. Well, I, don't I don't know. You know, maybe he comes over and they playing very good. I don't That's know. That's pretty good. That's pretty That's good. good. Yeah. You know, he was very good. He had a good back end. He has unbelievable technique. Oh, yeah. Okay. Travis got it. Travis has got it. Nice. It's like I'm listening to Jay speak. Yeah, Jay. You always talk like this. Like he's something the fucking about. Oh. <laughs> nice. Yeah, that's funny. You know what's so funny is that I didn't, I always expected Julian Arnold to have an Italian accent. And then when so he came, went straight American. Italian. Accent, I thought the Andy Amo thing was like his whole thing. And I'm like, oh, he's got, it's Italian. He must be Italian. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's so wild. Yeah, in Italian, bro. So he's not even Italian at all? I don't believe so. What? Why is he doing the Andiamo thing then? I, I think it said something like his grandmother used to say it to him or some shit. I don't know the storyline, but <laughs> okay. as far as I know, he's not Italian. He certainly looks shocked. like an Italian, so I don't know. Maybe he is. <laughs> we'll have to ask him that. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, uh, okay. Well, hopefully, you know, it's, the, it's this year. This is the year for the Smash, which if you want to show your support, you oh. can... Uh, I got some you some stuff. gifts. I yeah, forgot. Yeah, yeah. I got you guys some... Okay. First off, all right, yeah, let's talk about this. Got me a gift. I was forced. Which to I request. A, <laughs> a gift is something you give out of the love and kindness of your heart. So this I, was Travis. Bring this. <laughs> <laughs> I need you to get this for me. I paid for my own <laughs> gift. Yeah, you did. Apparently, I'm paying a high travel cost. I didn't know. The I, shipping fees shipping were expensive. Fees high, right? yep. So you got a giant ball. 
Yeah, the, I saw Jeannie don't signing. Do it, Luke. <laughs> I couldn't help it. People at home don't know. They don't know what's being held they up. They fucking know exactly, Luke. <laughs> you ain't fooling nobody. It's like the big tennis balls they sign at okay. tennis tournaments. They now have a gigantic pickleball. Yeah, yeah. Are you that, gonna are you gonna sign it? Um, no, I think what we'll save it for is getting people that come on, you know, pros that come on the pod to sign it. Yeah, pros, yeah. Get pros enough on back of the rack. We'll have them sign it. Get enough good signatures and then maybe auction it off for charity. That or sounds nice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, but I love it. I thought it was a great, and apparently you can't get them online, so Travis had to pick it up at awesome. the, in North Carolina for me. There you go. <laughs> awesome. But for you guys, I got new Sunday Swagger shirts, and these are specifically Florida Smash wow. Sunday Swagger polos. I, I want to say this really quick. Well, no, go ahead. You can finish, and then I'll go. That's, that's all I had. I oh. Tell me what you guys go think. Ahead. Pull it out. Show it off. I mean, so here's the funny thing. I've been playing like shit all year, right? And all year I've been wearing, because Sunday sorry. Swagger dropped sorry, me, Chris. for those of you that know. So I've been wearing Kenny Flowers. Just nice shirts. They got great stuff. I walk into this event and I'm like, you know what? It's been long enough. Sunday Swagger is who I am. Oh, yeah. So I wore Sunday Swagger for every fucking match. There you go. <laughs> and I felt much better about myself. Look at those. So like that it is... or not, I'll be wearing Sunday Beautiful. Swagger again. It's like an orange man. alligator print, and it's got Beautiful our... Shit. And boy, what a material. Our team like, logo Jesus. on the back of the neck. I've missed you. <laughs> <laughs> so, we, we actually have an, ex, an extra few. We've got extras. So, we're going give to give, give one away? I think we should give one girl, one, one, one men's, female. One's women's, yeah. yeah. Okay. All right, well, head to our Instagram, and we'll, uh, we'll record a little video with them, and uh, give them away. Tell you yeah. how to enter. They're so. very nice shirts. They're great quality. And if you love orange and you love orange alligator print, you love the Florida Smash, you're going to love these. Absolutely. All right. Um, what do you guys got planned for the rest of the day, guys? Are you going to play at all? You got time to play? I'd like to drill. Okay. Maybe we'll drill today. Are you going to drill? All right. Perfect. After Boba. After some Boba. Oh, my God. <laughs> Don't, I'm already getting the shakes. Sweat. I'm actually packing. Today, I'm leaving tomorrow for a week to go see a bunch of Has what? Anyone ever said something? <laughs> <laughs> very odd, right? <laughs> that was a weird way of saying it. I think. I don't know. What? Like, I say, what are you doing today? And then it's like, I got this, 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 and then I got a pack tonight. It's like an, a 30 minute thing at most. And you say, I'm packing today. Like, the whole day is required for you to fucking put Yeah, that's what I'm doing today. It's one thing I'm packing. <laughs> For yeah. a trip to go see a bunch he's of pickleball got, clubs around the lot, country. He has I a lot you. of Sunday like, Swagger I could say, shirts. I could say to him, hey, uh, he does have a lot of Sunday Swagger shirts. <laughs> Everybody keeps telling me how much they're sending Graham. Um, but I could, I could see that. Like, hey, I need, you, to, Gary. I need to drill today, Graham. Can you hit with me? And him would go, I got a pack. <laughs> <laughs> There's a very real possibility in our conversation. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Where I wonder in my head, like, you have to do shit. There you go. <laughs> well, Graham's there packing. Grogu. All right, I'll say it different. I got to prepare for a trip. Okay. Which means more than just packing. That's, that That is very good. Okay, yeah. Alteration of your verbiage. We'll take it. We'll take it. Yeah, you're going on a tour up the Northeast. I, no, actually, uh, the Southeast. I'm going okay. to see, it's pretty cool. I'm going to see Rally Pickleball Club. I'm excited. Pickle and Social. Okay. Chicken and Pickle. Yep. Um, three other clubs in Austin. Yep. Aces in Cincinnati. Wow. And Ooh. yeah, in Atlanta. So, and I'm going to see the Atlanta um, Beltline. So wow. I'm going to go see, yeah. I'm going to six cities, or no, sorry. Yeah, six cities, 12 clubs in five days. And it's wow. you and Ruben the whole time. And it's Ruben and I. Wow. <laughs> yes, it's, yeah. You guys are getting real sweet. It's ridiculous. Graham's just cheating on me all over the place. I see him more than I see anyone else in my life. Now. I know. <laughs> I'm not sure how I feel about that. It's, it's a lot. That used to be my role. <laughs> <laughs> well, you're traveling a lot this month too. Don't try to, you know, first of all, you're playing a money ball with Austin. You played Padel. You're out day. of town. You're really fucking, you know, <laughs> you're, you're going to fall on my list here pretty quick. Well, you're not in town as much as you used Honey, to be. it's okay. <laughs> <laughs> you don't text. We're going to drill don't today. Call, you don't call your We're going to drill today. <laughs> Great. Uh, all bring right. me a boba. I'm going to give you a good drilling. All, all right. Some fucking boba. <laughs> and then, uh, yeah, I'm excited. Hopefully we can, uh, we're, we'll all be there for, in Atlanta. So hopefully try and we get, get some pod action in while we're there, maybe. See yep, if we can do yep. a better job. Yep, for sure. Oh, uh, yeah, you're coming, too. A yeah. lot of people are coming. Yeah, I already yeah. heard one. Someone got a huge Airbnb to bring, like, a whole group of fans for this match, too. Oh, For really? Atlanta. Yeah, like 12 or 14 people in That's one Airbnb. Cool. Yeah. Are they still doing an event at GT Bray? Is that happening? The, no. No. They, they were in Miami. Miami said no, so we're going to GT Bray, and then Miami said yes again, so it's oh, back okay. in Miami. 
which is better. I, I have to admit it. I want well, it to be here, but Miami's I want to be better. here just so that all the peoples could come. Oh, that'd be amazing. Yeah, exactly. Like we were talking about it yesterday. It would be fucking a shit show. Could you imagine? Yeah. Oh, and also- I'd literally buy a keg. Like, come on, guys. Let's get it going. A new thing they're doing too, I think, and probably I shouldn't say this, but- Oh, that dirty was silky. On the line. Uh, the Kyle Yates, if you want to look on camera, what just happened there? Oh, yeah. Oh, from this side, at least it was in. Oh, I, I thought it, it was, was good. good. Yeah, yeah, I, I thought it was good too. <laughs> um, they are going to have an amateur MLP event simultaneous with the pro MLP event in Atlanta. What do you Say think about that? that? They're doing a MLP amateurs simultaneously while they're doing the MLP in Atlanta. Very, very cool. And it's run by somebody. It's going to be run by somebody we know, which is pretty cool too. <laughs> That's You're afraid to say. Well, because I don't know that's been announced yet. I don't uh, want to get him in trouble. Okay, I'm in trouble. Okay, yeah. you do have a habit of getting people in trouble. Yeah, I don't want to do that. I want to avoid that as much as possible. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, that's that's what we got. Um, so, great job, guys. And Sperry. Hey, thanks for <laughs> thanks 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 for watching. Back of the rack. Tennis still fucking sucks. <laughs> uh, that's a nice outro. I like it. Bye, guys. <laughs> balls. <laughs> balls. <laughs> All right, Luke bye. Luke loves balls. <laughs> <laughs>